Welcome to another episode of the Imagine Happiness Show, where we interview successful entrepreneurs on how they manage to have a happy family life while dealing with the madness of entrepreneurship. Today's guest is Tenko Nikolov. He's the CEO of SiteGround, a web hosting company based in Bulgaria. Tenko and I go back, I don't know, five, six, seven years or so from the Max CDN days. Tenko has a really awesome team and he is also a dad of two children, a newborn, I think two month old or so. So he's going through the tough times with his wife right now. The first six months are always tough. But anyhow, Tenko, super happy to, to have you on the show and to catch up with you. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me. It's, it's, it's really nice that you invited me to this show. Absolutely. Um, I did some research about you. I mean, I, I know you for a while, but now that you're coming on the show, I, I you know, listened to some interviews that you gave prior. And something I didn't know is that you started in, out in support at, uh, at SiteGround. And then you came from support agent to CEO, which is kind of an awesome <laughs> transition. Big shift. <laughs> So, um, yeah, maybe you, you tell the audience how the SiteGround story came uh, about. Well, SiteGround was founded in, in 2004, uh, which is a long time ago. In, in internet years, it's a very long time ago. It right? is a long time ago, yeah. And uh, it was founded out of a dorm room and uh, out of a desire to make it easier for everyone to build better, I guess, faster, safer websites without worrying about managing hosting. Uh, so ever since we, uh, uh, ever since 2004, we, I think we became masters of crafting complex technologies, uh, into hassle free web hosting solutions. And today we power over, I guess, 800,000 websites, uh, online businesses and enterprises, uh, with managed hosting solutions that I think our customers love. And we, we, we do everything for the love of our customers. And as you started, I, I joined the company very i think a month after it started uh as a tech support rep i think i was employee number four uh so it, it, it's dif really difficult to say that i was only tech support at that time everybody was doing everything everything hmm. pretty much everything yeah so uh i our marketing director was doing support as well our, our web development director was doing support as well so everybody was doing support uh and uh, uh not uh not much time after that uh i i became the the support supervisor and after that i became the ceo for the company i think it was still in 2004 or maybe early 2005 and, and now you, yeah now you are how many people uh that's a very difficult question i think 460 is the right number right now and i think we've hired close to 100 this year alone Wow, that's some nice growth. You also opened up a new office in Spain, I think. Uh, it's not very new right now. I think it's three years old now. Holy uh, but cow, yeah. time flies. <laughs> yeah, but we have an office in Madrid, uh, which is the only physical office that we have outside Bulgaria. And we have employees in, in a lot of countries as well, but we don't have physical offices. Spain is the only one outside Bulgaria that we have like a physical office. Mm -hmm. um, you are very big on vision mission values and um i always knew that you have like a really great culture from meeting you know your team and members at conferences and seeing what you share on facebook like the awesome events that you do and the awesome office space that you have it looks really really fun and amazing and the, the actually the events that you put on is kind of mind-boggling how how cool how cool they are so um what are your core values of the of the business? I think you have three of them, right? And how do you? What are they, and how do you live them? <laughs> so we believe in in how do I say this? We believe in giving a damn about our clients, about our colleagues, about our environment, and and about uh, our mission to to give uh, hassle free web hosting solutions to our clients. And uh, we've always been driven by curiosity and passion. And uh, our purpose has always been of making an impact, making an actual impact and, uh, and not like scoring and, and reaching targets. So uh, we've always loved what we do and we, we take, take a pride, big pride in our work. Uh, we always try to do, deliver more than what is expected, uh, more than just working web hosting uh and uh we we i think we try to change the stereotype of working at an it company 
Uh, we try to do no clocking of your work time. We try to do no fixed breaks. We try to do no phone off hours, no cubicles. And uh, we know the, the importance of having fun and not take, taking yourself too seriously. And uh, we, I think everything we do is in order to, for whatever we do, we make it count. So our, our uh, mission is that uh, uh, both our customers and our, and our colleagues are really, really happy with their environment, uh, with what they have, and to continue changing the hosting sphere so that uh, everybody can actually have a website. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you communicate this? I mean, you're living it, right? But how, how do you communicate this to your employees and how do you keep yourself accountable that you actually live up to this? That is a bloody good question. Uh, <laughs> so this is, this is something that you, you don't really communicate. This is something that this is an atmosphere that you create. And uh, as long as you, you're able to create it and sustain it, uh, people will either love it or hate it. So if they love it, you just need to push harder to make things even better. Uh, it's not something that you, you say, hey, you know, you, you have the best office in, in Bulgaria, you should be happy. Uh, people have to feel it. So first time we, we, uh, we moved to uh, a very nice office because when we started the company for, and for 10 years after that, we had the crappiest office ever. <laughs> we, we, we bootstrap Max ADN as well. So in the beginning, we had a really shitty office was like bringing yeah. clients and it was always like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And me and my partner, we had a bucket in our room uh, that every time it would rain, uh, we, ha we will put that bucket in on our desk because, because the, 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 there would be water pouring from the ceiling. And we would collect that water. And when we, when we moved off this office to our first like Google style office with a lot of recreational areas and a lot of like free space and game rooms and no stuff. No more buckets. No more buckets. And, and uh, uh, at the time of the move, people were really unhappy about it because they were, even though the old office was like small and broken and there was <laughs> nothing fancy about it, people loved it. Uh, mm -hmm. pe people really enjoyed it and people were really, really unhappy about having to move. Uh, so this is, as, as I said earlier, this is not something that you'd simply explain. That this would be nicer. This would be for the better. Uh, so we, we did what, what we thought was best for building an office. We, we built the office that how we imagined uh, an IT office should look like. And eventually when we moved off two weeks after, everybody was loving it. Everybody was saying uh, long hours after work to just spend time in this beautiful office. So it's, if you, if you do it right, you don't have to, you don't have to tell anybody about anybody about mm -hmm. it. People will just feel it. So that's what we're it's, trying to do. That's, that's the ideal, but most in most organizations, you have to kind of write it down, have it maybe on the wall and communicate it over and over again. So people actually, you know, really, know it and use it as a decision filter you know when you make certain decisions on you know for example if your your thing is to if your mission is to always make customers happy or put put customers first then you would not release something on a friday because if something goes wrong it could mess up the customers yes. weekend you know like or, or whatever it is you now kind of that you have these procedures in place that you can say yes or no to certain yeah. things we, so, uh, I th we have all those procedures in place and, and they're based on a lot of negative experience throughout the years. Uh, but uh, this, is, uh, this is more of a, like a work process rather than something that we go talk about every day. Like uh, our developers, they know that they, ha they don't have the right to commit on Friday. Hell, hell, they don't have a right to commit on Thursday as well. <laughs> so whatever they, they've done, it's up until Wednesday so, so that we're sure that if we hit a bug, there will be at least two days of working time before, before the week is off. And I don't want to have, like, before, uh, before uh, we were so big uh, and uh, we had so many employees, uh, we used to we used to be ninjas and we used to work every single weekend trying to mm -hmm. fix stuff that we've actually broken on a Friday or on a Thursday, and I, I really try to avoid that. I really try mm -hmm. to avoid that. There is there is nothing that we that can replace your weekend with your family. So yeah, very very true. Uh, huh. 
interesting how the, how this how these things grow over time you know since you've been doing this for 2004 you know by by this time all these systems or routines and rules have kind of established over the years i guess right yeah with, with maxian we had this problem that we first we didn't have when we were netting a we didn't have a, a clear vision on what we want to do and then we started max cdn and the vision was to make cdn as accessible and as easy to use as possible for everybody you know back in the days you had to buy enterprise quote-unquote cdn where you need an annual contract and spend a lot of money and you have to talk to a sales guy he wants to upsell you and blah and we just want, wanted to make it very easy and accessible for people and <clears throat> and then this really worked then we, we took off and maxi and really took off but then we kind of lost our vision because we hired more and more strong people in new position in key positions like a new vp of sales a new head of engineering and we never told them what the thing is really about and then we started to walk in 10 different directions, you know? So, so uh, and this yeah. really messed with, messed with our growth, messed in terms of making product decisions. We built this crazy analytics platform that was great for a handful of enterprise customers, but the majority of our customers was like, okay, guys, that's cool, but what do I do with it? You know, so kind of keeping keeping on on track and making the right decisions so we kind of have our North Star in our line and we're walking yeah. to, to the right direction. So how do you enforce this? You're absolutely right about this. So there is one thing that we did throughout the years that I think, I didn't think it was a winning strategy when we did it, but uh, right now I think it was the right thing to do. So for, I, th I guess, 12 years, we hadn't hired an, an outside manager. So we've mm -hmm. we've always upgraded somebody from the inside of the company, which, which is awesome. Which makes the team so strong, like family life. Yes, threads, like a and pour, you don't pouring glue into the organization. And you you don't need to sell the company values to to that person because he's already mm -hmm. he's already felt it. He's oh, that's already, a good point. Actually, he already knows it. He already endorses it because if if he's staying and he wants to to go uh, on an upper position, then he probably values the company and he probably values his job or her job. Uh, so uh, since last year, uh, we started uh, we started slowly hiring outside management expertise. So, for example, we hired an outside CFO, and uh, and uh, we hired a, a couple of uh, like um, guys for for the web development team that do like middle middle management. But uh, it's it's not as as difficult nowadays because we we already have the path behind us, and we already. We already know what to do. So you're right. We have to explain those new people how, what the what the company structure is and what the company values are and mission is. Uh, but it's it is not as difficult as it would have been while the company was growing massively, while it was a small company, and while mm -hmm. uh, we had so many procedures that were missing and we needed to create. And it was a chaos back then. Uh, we we wanted to do we wanted to do the right thing, but there was so many right things to do. And, and right now, it, there is like a process for almost everything. So it's it's much more streamlined. It's much easier. Uh, I don't say we we don't uh, we don't do our best to to get those employees up to speed, uh, but uh, I think it's easier right now than it was ten mm. years ago. That's really awesome. Actually, I never thought about this. That when you just like always kind of get people let's say in at support and then you kind of grow them up into all the areas of the organization then they'll always have the values ingrained versus bringing in people that you put on top of these people that they manage we it's actually we actually good. have a we actually have a, like i think five or six different career paths in our company so when you when you become a customer support, uh, you you can eventually become a sysadmin, and when you become a sysadmin, you can eventually become a, become a DevOps, and mm -hmm. when when you become DevOps, you can, and so on and so forth. And we have a couple of those career paths. So whenever you start in the company, you know where where you can actually end up. And if mm -hmm. you want to, if you want to, the chance is yours to take it up. And I've always thought that this is the right strategy because, uh, like. Um, Promoting people from inside the teams uh, not only uh, gives the strength that I, I mentioned before, that people that actually know the company, uh, but also gives the team credibility so they know that their their work pays off. So the, the more hardworking they are, the more likely they are to get a promotion. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if you hire if you hire like outside management, they know yeah, that... Yeah, they work the, really hard and then like somebody else gets yes. put on their head, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, an outside person might have the, the better expertise, 
but he will surely not have or she will surely not have uh, the, the, the exact mindset for our company. It will take some time to align. It will take some time, as you said, to, to learn the mission, to, to, uh, to align with the statement of the company. So I don't know. It has worked for us in the past. I, I'm not saying this is, this is like a cure for every company, but it has worked very well for us. Yeah, I, I can see that, especially for bootstrap company, it's like the perfect way of doing it. And you could even make this a thing that everybody has to start as support. You know, like the best hires I ever had in MaxCDN, like that went to other positions, always came from support because they know the problem really well, they know the product really well, they know the customers really well. You know, so it's like the perfect starting ground. And you could even force everybody, even higher, higher management that you hire now, that they have to start in, text, in level one support because even the freaking CEO start in level one support. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of it, like... it, I, I still talk to customers from time to time. And I believe me, I, I, I get the worst customers. Not that there, there is a bad customer, but uh, if, if somebody wants to speak to me, it never is about something good. <laughs> <laughs> do you um i'm, I'm, I'm uh, talking about how to hold yourself accountable that you actually live up to your values in terms of providing a great experience for your employees and great experience for your customers do you measure like net promoter score or things like this like certain feedback uh from customers we... customers or you can also measure uh so, enps like employee nps yeah we don't measure exactly uh net promoter score uh, for customers, we uh, we measure the satisfaction of their reply either by chat, by phone, or by ticket. And as long as they're not happy with something, they and and usually the guys that are happy they don't say anything. But the guys that are unhappy, they will. They're vocal, yeah. They're really vocal about it. So they, as long as there is unhappy, somebody unhappy, we try to see it, what the problem was, if it is reasonable, and if it's something that is within our procedures. Because sometimes it's like old procedures or something is misplaced or something like that we try to fix it and we we it, we do that every single day like yesterday we had a very very big discussion about some something that we did that is causing like a hundred tickets per day uh it, it was not that big of a problem but i know for a fact that a hundred people feel it a day and that that's that's really that's bad, really yeah. bad and i ha i had stepped in and, and taken serious measures that we fix it immediately because this is something that we don't value. And uh, the, same, the same goes to employees. We don't do a net promoter score, but once a year we do this anonymous survey uh, for best employer uh, in Bulgaria. And this year there is this company called Eon, uh, which is a big international company that's doing the survey in, I guess, 170 countries. So this year we're not only competing with, with Bulgaria, but also competing with, uh, with Europe. So the last two years we're the best employer of Bulgaria. And the result result of that survey is is a good good enough example for me how happy our employees are, uh, and uh, hopefully we will we will be the best employer in Europe this year. Mm. I can um, we, we used uh, Net Promoter Score for our customers and for uh, our employees as well, and it's it's very easy to do. If if you want, we can talk offline about this a little bit because I think sure. it's, it's very easy and it's it's it gives you a metric, it gives you a number, you know, kind of. Let's say net promoter score is 60 and then you roll out a new feature and then you see does the number change to the positive or to the negative. So you actually really know everything that's that's happening or you can really drill it down to each single support engineer what's this individual's net promoter score. You know, so you can see how good, I let's say, somebody... I would about that, yeah. That's something I'm really passionate about, so very very happy to talk, talk about this offline. Okay. Um, you have all your... You have, you know, you're in the hosting space, so 24-7... Um, support and live chats, etc., is like a, a must, I assume, right? Treating customers right. Uh, do you have yeah. all your? Do you have um, the majority of your people are? Oh no, you said they're all over the world. Like they're not only in Sofia. How do you handle nighttime shifts? Uh yeah. So we have people in the US. Uh, we have, but obviously there is nighttime in Europe as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have we have, we have people everywhere. I think in the Philippines and Taiwan and a lot of countries, mm. uh, Ukraine. And night shifts are handled the same way they're handled everywhere else. People, okay, okay. Pe people, like, since, since you have them all over the world, then yeah, just, people like, work at know, night, which is which is something that I I'd love to fix, but I haven't found the fix for the past 13 years <laughs> for, uh, for us it was you know since we were la based and la and vegas we had our offices 
um, and we opened up an office in Serbia. This was our nighttime solution for you know like being in the US, and we had yeah um, we're doing we're doing a similar thing. But since our Bulgarian offices employ the, the most amount of employees in our company, mm-hmm. so we we have night shifts in Bulgaria every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thinking about employee happiness, like probably something that is burning under your nails too. There is a fix, lot right? of people. There is though a lot of people that would love to work night shifts. Uh, rather than day shifts. This is something that I discovered several year, several years ago. Uh, we we uh, ended up, so we had this thing that employees would work like one uh, morning shift, then two uh, afternoon shifts, then two night shifts, then we'll take two and a half days off, mm-hmm. and then again. And I think two or three years ago, we changed the model uh, where we, we will give employees the ability to choose whether they, they would like to like do only day shifts or only night shifts. And night mm-hmm. shifts will be not significantly, but better paid. Right, and, okay. and you would only be allowed to take night shifts for 30 days in a row. And mm-hmm. then you'll have to convert to day shifts for at least a month because we believe that taking like two it's months. Not or, yeah, it's not healthy. Yeah, it's not healthy for you. And you would you would be surprised how many people opt opt in for doing the night shifts. Well, hmm. I guess it's still tech, you know, like a lot of tech people are night owls. <laughs> yeah, there a lot of people used to like playing games at night or partying at night, and they they would actually uh, prefer to stay on the computer uh, at night rather than during the day. There are people that like to go fishing, for example, during the day, and don't mind working during the night. So there is. People for everything. I guess fish, fishing is oh, almost sleeping most of the time, so I guess it's a good balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it isn't all the time. Let's talk a little bit about family, you know, since this is about uh, family and how do you manage. First of all, let's, let's, I'm, I'm curious to see why do you do what you do? You know, like you've been very successful, so you could kind of do the same thing as countless hosting providers and sell to endurance and and chill chill out yeah i kind of what what keeps you in the game selling to endurance has been an option for a long time (laughs) uh (laughs) but uh as i said we everybody i i guess everybody at the company and and me and my partners explicitly we love what we do we we're really eager to change the hosting world for the better for for our users and me myself i have always been fascinated by the internet and by technology and uh, i don't know if you if you know this story but when i was 13 years old i i i hacked in a uh, secure server of a very big u.s enterprise with a friend of mine and uh and uh before doing something nasty, we, we stopped about and think, thought about it. And we, we decided that we have to contact the company and tell them about it. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know how I reached that decision at the age of 13. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, eventually we did. We, we talked to the company and uh, be, uh, we thought that our lives are done. That those com- that company would give us to the feds and uh, police mm-hmm. will show, show, show to our door. And nothing like that happens. That company actually offered us to pay, that, to pay us for what we did. That's awesome. Yeah, and, uh, and we didn't want money at the time. We were teenagers. We didn't have anything to do with... We didn't, I, I couldn't mm-hmm. buy a car because I couldn't drive it. So... <laughs> What is money for? Well, I had a computer it. already. That, that was everything <laughs> I needed. So we actually asked for a server, a server that is plugged into a data center and that, that is online 24-7 that we can use for whatever pr- purpose we like. And, and that company actually gave, gave us one server in their data center. And this is the first uh, hosting attempt that I have in my life. I, I, the first website that I ever hosted was on that server. And I was really fascinated by it. And ever since, I haven't stopped doing it. Huh, so this awesome. is this is how, so how I guess I guess karma gave you this gift for not yeah. messing around and rewarding you with you know running a very I think so one of yeah. the biggest hosting companies in the world now I'd That's love awesome. to think so yeah so <laughs> ever since ever since I've been doing this and I I still love it I still love it every day That's awesome if you love what you do you never work a single hour in your life right Yes although I lo- I work a lot of hours <laughs> <laughs> But it's not work it's fun right? Yeah it's fun can, Most can of the relate. time, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So with family, you have you have um, you're married and you have two kids. How do you manage the work life headaches of being an entrepreneur? Of like you know, kind of it, it, you know, your company is very mature. So I guess you're not like in crazy startup mode where you, as you mentioned before, work through the weekends, right? Mm -hmm. So like, thank God this is kind of kind of be behind you. But I guess like still turning your brain off, like leaving leaving work at work is still a challenge. How do you, so you manage this? So you you have led a big company and you know that turning your brain off is not an option. Like <laughs> this is not something that you do. It's it's always there, you're always thinking about something. It's it's the the question is can you actually disconnect and spend time with your family while you're still yeah, like <laughs> so, uh, uh, dim down a little bit yes <laughs> yes so i think i learned to do that so i used to work late i used to work seven days a week i used to not disconnect at all from the office i and after burning out a couple of times i figured it, it might not be the best thing to do uh and uh i tried to for especially when my 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 son my older kid was born uh i i i just decided that i have to leave the office at 5 p.m every day and uh, go get the kid from kindergarten and play with him and help help my wife with the things that I have to do at home. And uh, I kind of made myself get used to that. So I, I kind of made myself get used to that routine. It's not that I'm disconnected. I'm still thinking about what I have to do or who I have to talk to or what emails I have to send. But I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it un, un, at least until the next morning. Uh, and before that, I, I was doing. I was waiting for everybody to get asleep at home and start typing my emails until three a.m. I'm forcing. I, I used to force myself not to do that for at least a couple of years. Then I get got used to it, and now it's really easy to do that. So whenever I, I need to do something, I'm I, I don't uh, think anymore that I I don't have to do it in, in in my home time. I just sit down and do it for five minutes and then leave the computer as is. And and I think it's much healthier for both me and my family this way. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. Like being able to turn off and think about other stuff, it's uh, often you can like overthink things, and the solution doesn't really show. Like for me, the when especially after yoga, when I, when I, after yoga session, I I'm so completely de-stressed that I then have the right ideas or the, the solutions for, for, for problems that I've been yeah. like <laughs> chewing, chewing on for, for a very long time. And I agree, it's, it's much healthier when you can turn, you know, when you can compartmentalize. And also, um, yeah, I think it's, it's really crucial to, to detach and create these systems that you're actually able to de detach. Yeah. You know, or, think, or, or rules, you know, because really otherwise right. you easily always get sucked back in. I think you're right. Like, truth is, nobody can build up a good work-life balance for you. Uh, every human being is different, and one thing that works for me, it, it might not necessarily work for you. So, uh, everyone has to figure this out on their own, and uh, some people just can't. Some people just can't detach, or don't wa don't want to detach, I or think. don't want to <laughs> detach, on, or when they detach, eventually they don't want to reattach again. Because they see how less stressful the life is without work, and <laughs> and you know, uh -huh. so yeah, I think then then they're doing the wrong thing. Like I think it's you know, even even when when you follow your passion, you know, like when you have a strong enough why or when you have like a mission um, and a vision that you want to fulfill, then it's even if it's stressful, it's still so rewarding to work towards this goal that it you know, even if it's hard, it becomes fun. Yes, you know exactly. Uh, Thanks to me. Hmm. Um, how do you manage to go through stressful times? You know, as running a company is, you know, you kind of always have to deal with some, some drama, right? It's kind of like if everything's going smooth, then nobody bothers you. But if shit hits the fan, they will come to you, right? And you have to have to deal with it. And also, Story in, of my in, life. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also in, in you know at, at home you know you, something you just have to deal with with stressful things whatever happens how do you how do you manage this uh, 
I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a master at it still. I think I think maybe 20 years from now I will I will be much better at it. Uh, but uh, I've been slowly learning to to take the ups and downs that life brings you and to try to smile upon them and to try to think of the best solution rather than sit down and curse and mm. and do stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't always work, but I've I've gotten much better at it. I I rarely uh, I used to be very annoyed by pretty much everything that go, that went out Cold of track. Wrong. Yeah, and right now it it really has to be something that really had hit shit the Big fan. One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really hard so that it it takes me out of my nerves. But it still happens from time to time. Uh, same applies at home. Uh, but I think kids are really training your nerves. You really, you really learn to be patient with kids. So I think kids help me with that as mm. well. Yeah, I agree. Like kids help me to be a better entrepreneur and a better leader. Yes. Yeah, you because know, also what you said, like you work less hours, but you you become way more productive. You just like focus on the stuff that really counts, because you know, like there's a, you know, an an end to it. You have to, you know, for example, for me, I have my daughter's coming from preschool in half an hour, and then you know I have to get stuff done so I can focus on her because she, you know, takes. Yeah takes no excuses you know like she'll stand here in my office and say daddy let's go to the pool yeah, exactly. or something like this. Yeah. so after this i have i have like <clears> two more meetings and at it and it's almost 4 p.m here and at 5 p.m whatever happens i have to be out of the office so that i can take the kid from kindergarten so whatever happens i have to be done get and, it done yeah yeah and i don't like to like leave stuff to do for tomorrow because tomorrow mm. there will be like new stuff to do <laughs> so I, whatever i do i have to do it today <laughs> <laughs> so you know it it as you said it it makes you really focused and wanting wanting to get the job done um managing happiness the the course that i have or the this framework that i came up with is about applying business principles to your family life uh, you know in terms of i don't know if you know how how i started was I came home from a meeting about roles and responsibilities and I was sitting on my couch at home and my daughter needed a diaper change. I told my wife, like, hey, honey, Emma needs a diaper change. And my wife got really upset that I told her about it and I didn't do it, right? And I thought, like, why are we fighting about this? My wife takes care of it most of the time and I'm totally cool with doing it, but how should I know that it's my turn at, at 8 p.m. on a Tuesday? And, you know, why are we fighting about this? And then the next morning we sat down and went through the roles and responsibilities of our of our relationship and this took away all these unspoken expectations and all of a sudden we you know 80 percent of all our fights were not not there anymore and then i started to apply lots of other business uh, business principles to my family life like regular meetings mission vision core values and, and all that stuff i'm curious if you apply any things that you have learned in business or do in business to your family life yeah daily meetings is, is 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 the thing that we do uh we we so before the kids we try to spend at least one hour a day talking to each other now with the kids it's we honestly don't have an hour a day talking to each other every single day uh but we try to do at least 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day to just telling each other how the day went what the problems were and what we want to do the next week or where do we want to go vacationing this is one thing we do the other thing that we do is connected to this one, but we just speak ourselves. So whenever there is something, we we try to speak up. We don't. We mm -hmm. try to not leave something unsaid, unresolved, unresolved. Yeah, because eventually this leads to a much bigger problem, as in business. Well, if you if you have like a problem with an employee and you don't you don't tell him, the problem will eventually grow up. It it won't disappear by itself. Mm -hmm. So. Communication is, I think, the biggest thing that keeps your family together. And then comes love and happiness and everything else. Because if you don't communicate well, even if you love each other like crazy, it won't last. Yep, very, very, very true. It's like 100% the, the case. And what, what I found by, by doing this, by applying these business principles to my family life is it's just like a communication framework, you know, that we have like our, our regular meetings, that we have our core values or our roles and responsibilities. So we have like something that is already defined. And even if we fight, we can, we have a framework to, 
to fight basically <laughs> right when, when, my, when my wife is upset like is annoyed by something i do then we'll we talk about in a family meeting and we approach it from a solution oriented standpoint so we talk about like hey this is what i don't like and after the fact not when you fight about it right when you're mm. clear clear yeah. mindset then we talk about like hey this is the thing that's annoying me how can we mitigate this or how can we remove this you know and then we kind of brainstorm like in a business environment like when there's a problem you would not yell at an employee you'd sit down like hey man this went wrong like how can yeah. we fix this how can we make sure it doesn't happen again etc etc and so like by having this mindset and also by communicating about this in a proper non-emotional manner um this you know worked like a charm charm for us exactly the same for us uh like before we weren't able to say each other everything uh and there were a lot of problems from the unspoken stuff and a lot of problems from the stuff that we said to each other but never find the will or the energy to, res to actually resolve it to find a solution and uh like speaking up without find finding a solution is actually the worst because mm -hmm. you you've dropped the bomb but yeah. you <laughs> but you've never done anything to like dissolve the bomb yep. so <laughs> eventually eventually it blows up so you have if you if you wanna if you wanna do it right i think you have to speak up but both of you should be willing to like make a step further or a step backwards in order to make a solution or to find the solution yeah that's that's exactly what we do when my, when we fight about something quote unquote fight i don't i don't really fight them my yeah we my... don't quarrel we talk and yeah, we have different yeah, yeah. opinions yep yep that's yeah. that's my i was i was raised like this my when i had a fight with my mother or my father or you know and then we talk like we're talking right now we just like yeah. discussed it you know like there's never any yelling my father always said if you have to yell your arguments are too weak yes you know, so, I, <laughs> so i think that's a, <laughs> that uh, is so you know. very true <laughs> <laughs> and also like even when when you have to say something tough let's say an employee is always late you know i would never yell at this employee like i would just like sit down with them and say hey like you can you can keep on doing this if you continue doing this this is bad for xyz reasons and if you continue doing this then we have to stop to work together and have to let you go but i would never be like yelling yelling at him or kind of you know show some negative emotions because they're also not good for my health i'd be you know always soft with the person but hard in the case you know i think that's like the way of of communicating yeah, I, I'm, also I'm, i'm actually doing something similar i try to whenever somebody is always late uh because I'm not hurt that much from him being or her being late. Like I, I don't care too much to be honest. As long as their job is done, it's it's okay for me. But their colleagues, they rely on them. That for example, there is a meeting. The <laughs> yeah, guy being late for meetings is like yeah. unacceptable. Yes. So I I make I make the guys that come late. I make them buy breakfast for everybody. <laughs> because <laughs> because because they they've hurt people that are waiting for them, and those people enjoy the breakfast that they buy. <laughs> that's awesome. that's I, 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 I don't fight with them like it's it's just like that if if you are late you have to buy breakfast mm -hmm. and everybody is happy like afterwards and nobody likes to buy breakfast <laughs> <laughs> especially when you have a town hall meeting of 400 people and you're late <laughs> and yeah and uh, and uh, not only that but people have to explain why they bought breakfast mm, not, okay. to, not to me that's <laughs> not awesome. to, not that's to really everybody cool. else yeah I, like I think that. I think it's a negative positive thing <laughs> <laughs> it's good I'll, i'll implement this as well um this was thank you man thank you for jumping on the show this was really awesome uh very good tips i really like it thank I'd, you, man. i'd like to wrap this up by asking the standard question that i always ask is which is yeah. what what are the three books that influence you the most in your life oh man I, as I told you before, that was some <laughs> a question that I thought about for some time. Uh, to be honest, I I don't read many books nowadays. I I do audio books all the time, but I don't have same here. I don't read books. I don't read physical books either. Yeah, I, I don't have the freaking time to read a book unless on an airplane or here. or on a two week holiday. Uh, but uh, I I really love like autobiography books, especially on IT entrepreneurs. I I enjoyed the Elon Musk autobiography because this guy is like the modern Steve Jobs or Henry Ford, and he proves that everything, even the unthinkable, is like possible if you truly believe in it. And I my also... favorite quote by Henry Ford: "Whether you think you can do it and whether not, both times you're right." Yeah. 
yeah, Jeff Bezos' biography, also fun to read. Uh, yeah, I took a lot of like good advices from it. Uh, a book that I took a lot of management advices from was, uh, how was it called? What They Don't Teach You in Harvard Business School. I think it was mm -hmm. by Mark Mark Cormark. Okay. It is like uh, advices from a sm street smart executive, not the mm -hmm. kind of advices that you would expect. Was something completely different. If you haven't read it, I super recommend it. Awesome. Yeah. So those books. And I'll give you my next read or listen. <laughs> it, it is a very old book. I think it was in the 70s or 80s. Still very applicable. I, re I reread it two or three years ago. Super masterpiece. Awesome. Well, cool, man. This was fun. Thank you very much for being on. Any shout outs, any things you want to mention? Any? Uh, just if you look for a great hosting provider, try SiteGround. <laughs> That's what's up. Any coupon codes? Any discounts? Uh, no, no discounts? Quality will not be discounted? Yes. Yes. Okay. We, don't, we, we, we believe in quality. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank, Thank you, you very for much for jumping me. on. Thank you for inviting me. It was super fun. And speak to you soon. Take care, man.